So this is the first video of a few that I'm going to do on moments and how to determine whether a, a rigid body is in equilibrium. So that's both from translational forces, whether it can move in the X or Y direction or whether the body can rotate. So first thing we need to do is define what we mean by a moment. And to do that, first of all, we're going to draw a body of some sort. And this is a rigid body, cannot deform. And we're going to think of one point on this body. And we'll call this point O. And this body can be subjected to a force F. Now, as we notice, this force F is not going straight through the point O. The line of action of this force is running at a distance away from O. So the moment at point O is actually a measure of how this force would cause this rigid body to rotate. So we can imagine that after applying this force, the body can rotate in such a fashion around point O if point O was fixed. So imagine putting your finger down on a piece of paper and twirling the piece of paper from the corner, but you've put your finger at a point somewhere in the middle of the paper. And that's what we've done here. The body's turned around about the point O where I've placed my finger down. Okay, so the moment then is you can also imagine that if I was to have placed a different force F, let's call this F2, just to differentiate. If I was to place this force here, the force is going in exactly the same direction, but it's closer to the point O. So if this, to get the same amount of rotation, the force F2 would need to be bigger than the force F. So the measure of the moment is actually the force that you're considering multiplied by the perpendicular distance so this has to be this angle here needs to be a right angle and we're going to call this perpendicular distance let's call it l for now and so the moment and let's use m for moments equals the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance in this case i've called that l so going back we can imagine that if we have somebody and this point o again that if the force is pointing in this direction and I'll draw the line of action of the force and the perpendicular line to it, that this will actually want to rotate around O in an anti-clockwise manner. We can also imagine the other situation where the same body and the same point O is now subject to force, and we're gonna do this just at 180 degrees so the line of action is exactly the same but the opposite direction the lever arm is exactly the same but now this wants to rotate clockwise around point o so we need to have some way of distinguishing whether we're going clockwise or anti-clockwise and some people choose to have a sign convention and we're going to go with that sign convention for most lectures, but we're also going to show alternative ways of doing it. But we're going to say that going in an anti-clockwise so going in an anti-clockwise direction equals the positive direction. So going that way is positive. And so naturally then means that the clockwise direction is the negative direction. And this is just purely a choice. We've all signed conventions. This really is just a choice that we choose to adopt. 
And so we're going to go very simple example of how we use this to calculate the moment. And so the example is I've got a body here have some dimensions this body has a length of D and at this point here which I'm going to call a this is where I'm going to take moments about and I'm going to subject this force this body to a force F at the top position which I'm going to call B and so simply the moment equals the force and I'll give that the letter F so the moment equals the force multiplied by the distance and so that equals and so if we were to say that the force for example was equal to 20 newtons and the distance D was equal to 5 millimeters then we can say that our moment equals the 20 newtons multiplied by 5 millimeters so the moment is 100 newton millimeters be careful with the units there that you consistent we kept with millimeters I could have converted to meters and then I would have had to put the units in meters and then we need to recognize in which direction this moment is acting around the point A and in this case so what you can do you can imagine putting your finger down on a piece of paper if you're doing this on paper rather than on a computer put your finger down on the point A and pull the piece of paper maybe the edge of your paper is over here so pull your paper it along so along the line of action and this will want to make your paper rotate in a clockwise direction and therefore we're going to say that this moment is negative Okay, that was a relatively simple example. So now let's complicate things matter. Let's look at exactly the same body. And we've got the same dimensions now. So that distance there is still five millimeters. And now I'm gonna apply a force but I'm not going to apply it at 90 degrees. I'm now applying this at an angle theta. So the force I'm gonna keep equal to 20 Newtons, and I'm gonna set the angle from the X axis. So the angle theta equals 30 degrees. Okay, so straight away we hit a problem. We know from our definition of our moments, and I'm gonna draw this again over the right hand side to give me a little bit more space to play with. Oops. So here's our body and our force is now at the 30 degrees and our definition of our moments was force times perpendicular distance and this presents us with a bit of a problem in that the perpendicular distance is actually this distance here and we don't know this distance now from high school mathematics we can use the vector dot product work out where these two the definition of these two lines and we can work out where this point is where the two vectors meet up and then we can finally calculate what this perpendicular distance d is okay but that's 
And that's one way of tackling the problem. What I'm going to suggest we do is we go with an alternative method and then so didn't want that in red let's do that in black an alternative method would be that what I can do is split my F into two vector two Cartesian components of the vector so I'm going to have F x and f y and now taking moments about point a we can see that f y the line of action of the force goes directly through a and has no lever arm from a so it's creating no moment whatsoever whereas f x has a lever arm that was equal to the five millimeters. So my moment is going to be Fx times the five millimeters. So let's do the calculations there. So Fx is equal to F times the cos of the angle theta. So that was 20 multiplied by cos of 30 which equals 17.3 newtons. And now armed with that information, the moment, and this time rather than just calling it M, I'm gonna give it the subscript A to denote, but it's the moment about the point A. So M at A equals 17.3, the Fx component of the force, multiplied by the lever arm of five millimeters and again recognizing that that's going in a clockwise direction gives me a moment of minus 86.6 .6 newton millimeters and we can extend this this example was a relatively simple example where we made sure that our FY went directly through the line of action of the force went directly through the point A so you can imagine we can extend this scenario to a different system where we have a frame type structure now we've still got the point A at the bottom and our this end of the frame structure we're now applying a force f but still at an angle theta and again we apply the same procedure rather than trying to work out this perpendicular distance which is very possible using vector vectors um, but it's much easier if we split this especially if we already know this dimension here let's call that the height and this dimension here which we're going to call w for the width if we know these dimensions already it's very easy for us then if we split this into the two vector components f x and f y but we can calculate the moment around a quite easily and let's carry on through we'll just do this without any numbers in the system so taking moments about a so m a or take we can either write the notation like this or take moments about a so we have f x and we'll worry about the signs in a minute we have f x multiplied by the distance h and we have f y multiplied by the distance w and the summation of the moments for this thing to be in equilibrium would be equal to naught but that's something we're going to come on to later we just want what is the total moment at a and so m a is equal to and f x times a is going in a negative direction because it's causing clockwise movement but f y is trying to cause 
anti-clockwise move movement and so the moment at a and i'm going to write that a bit neater m a equals f y times w minus f x multiplied by h 